Hey, evening. I said this morning that it was going to be cloudy and cool, and then the sun came out. So sorry you're missing out on the weather. But uh, we promise to keep this time uh, as uh, concise as we can to give you the information we need and to get you out of here by 7.30. Uh, uh, so what I'd like to do is just start off um, by praying, and then I'll kind of tell you what we're going to do next. So would you bow and pray with me now? Father, we thank you uh, so much for what you are doing in our midst here at this church. What a blessing, what a privilege to be a part of this place. And uh, Lord, I thank you for each person here. I thank you each for each person that has come uh, to this place because every person is valuable to the mission of this church and to the community of this church. We are family. And I pray that uh, tonight would feel uh, like a family meeting that we would be able to speak candidly and openly and um, that we would all leave here excited uh, and on the same page about what you're doing here and where we're going. And so we give you this time now in Christ's name. Amen. All right, now listen, to start off, I want to have uh, our chairman of our elder board, uh, Dan Lane, come on up and start us. So would you uh, go ahead and welcome up Dan Lane. Come on up, Dan. It's like an intro to a comedy club or something there for a minute. Um, how's everyone doing? So my name is Dan Lane. I'm currently the uh, chairman for our elder board. I'm going to be doing a few things tonight. Uh, one will be walking us through the agenda for this evening, and then I'll also do a quick reminder uh, on some of the uh, individuals who help uh, make the place work. We're not, I'm not going to get to everyone as well, but I want to make sure we have time for some reminder introductions. All right, so here's our plan for this evening. Uh, we'll do a welcome, uh, I'll reintroduce the elder team and talk a little bit more about that. Uh, 2022 highlights, what's coming up, uh, kind of what we have to look forward to uh, the remainder of the year. A ministry map reminder uh, updates from our very talented and appreciated staff. A financial update. And the Q&A uh, will actually be with the elders. What we're going to do for that is we're going to dismiss the elders before we're finished here. They'll be in the atrium uh, and then just stop by as you have questions and everything, and they'll be able to hopefully answer those or follow up if there's something you ask that we need to look into a little bit more. All right, let's transition over to the elders. If I could have the elders come on up here for a minute. All right, so there are a large group of people, um, including uh, all of you that help keep this place run, running. And first and foremost, uh, as this group, uh, in speaking for them, just wants to say thank you. All right, there's no way this uh, church could be where it is without all of your tireless efforts uh, along the way and your tireless giving and everything. And we just wanted to say thank you uh, to start, um, absolutely. Uh, the next thing what I wanted to do is just go name by name really quick, introduce them to put a face with the name. Also, these are the men who you're going to see during the Q&A at the end. Uh, you should see them in the atrium walking around. Feel free to approach. I promise we don't bite. Um, the other way you can reach us if, let's say, you leave here and you have a question, you're like, oh, I really wanted to ask about this thing from today, is you can email us at elders at silvercreekchurch.com. And we'll get back to you either in person, uh, email, phone, or uh, some other way. So with that, let me do some uh, quick reintroductions from the group. So John Jones is at the end. Uh, you'll be hearing from him later tonight. He's our treasurer. He'll cover uh, the financial section. Uh, followed by him is Matt Smith. Rick Shooping, uh, who is actually on staff here at Well and literally keeps the lights on for us day in, day out. Uh, we couldn't do it without him. All right, and that, yeah, I don't want to fall off here, but I want to make sure you can see everyone. Uh, Jeff New, uh, Bob Weishauer, Jeff Rerica, and then again, I'm Dan Lane. Now, one other thing that I want to mention is uh, all of us have individual responsibilities uh, that we cover in addition uh, to just regular meetings on kind of the state of the church, but... Uh, for instance, John Jones is our what we call like ministry liaison or ministry champion who works closely on our adult ministries with Dan Gifford. So whenever we get together, we meet, we make sure that Dan has someone to talk to and kind of an elder point of contact in addition to coming to us whenever we want. So John's that point for that one. Uh, Jeff Rerica 
is with kids. So he spends time with Caitlin just to understand what we can do better uh, in those areas, what we can learn and take away so she feels she has an advocate involved as well. Bob Weishauer is for students. So think of him as Dom's kind of right-hand man, contact, mentor, things like those along the way when Dom has questions, run into issues as well. So these three guys are primary contacts. If you see them afterward, feel free to ask them about uh, questions along those ministry areas, obviously in addition to the staff who do this full-time, day by day. All right. Okay, and with that, yeah. Yeah, we have two other guys who um, are not able to make it here tonight. One's feeling under the other, or the other one's traveling. Is uh, Mark Kanabi and Rob Eberly. So those two guys are greatly missed tonight. Uh, we wish they were here, um, and I know they wish they could be here as well. All right, with that, uh, we'll send the elder team back down. Transition to 2022 highlights. All right. Well, thank you, Dan, and thank you to uh, the elder team. Uh, really thankful for these guys. We meet uh, every third Saturday to discuss the business of the church. We try to get done in uh, three hours, but it never happens. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's an amazing investment that they make. And I wanted to just say this uh, quickly. Uh, these guys have an interesting role because much of what they do you never see on a Sunday, but you see all the fruit of what they do. So there is so much hard work going on on Saturday mornings and early morning meetings where teams are meeting and lunches with their respective, you know, ministry liaison and there's just so many things that these guys are doing. So I am personally really grateful for these men and, uh, and, and all that they have invested in. We, we could not be here without this team. Um, so thank you for them. Would you just thank them with me? <laughs> all right. Well, I have the, uh, I, I, I was telling my wife earlier, you know, these, these meetings are important because we need to tell you what exactly is happening here at this church. And there could be a day where I don't look forward to a meeting like this because I could be having to give you news that's not great. It's not one of those meetings. This is a meeting that I am so excited to be giving you reports that are really exciting, and all of you are a massive part of these exciting uh, and, and really good updates, I think. So I'm just grateful for that. And I just, I don't, I say that because I don't want to take it for granted. You know, it, it's not always going to be, it may not always be great. Now, hopefully it is, but probably not. Um, so let me give you some highlights in the last uh, five months. We launched as an independent uh, local church, Silver Creek Church, five months ago. And uh, God has been at work, and I just want to give you some highlights uh, of the last five months. Before I do that, I wanted to say this too. We, we did this, we said this in membership class. I just said it again in the last membership class. But when you join this church as a member, you do not join a club. You join a community, you join a family, and you join a mission. Right? And, and if you are going to be a part of this family and a part of this mission, then you've got to know what's going on. And that's really why these meetings are important. We're going to have two a year. Uh, one now. The next one will be, I believe, in October. And uh, then, again, you will get a, a kind of a, a yearly annual report, uh, most likely at the very end of December or the beginning of January for that whole past year. So those, those are the big ways that we're going to be communicating these things to you. Um, let me first talk about just, just in general attendance. So I'm throwing out numbers to you. Numbers don't tell the whole story, but they are important. Later on, you're actually going to hear some more specific stories of individuals and groups what, that have had great experiences here because uh, that tells even a better story than numbers. But um, our growth over the last five months in January, our, our in-person attendance on average, on the course of January, was 356. That's adults and kids total, all right? 
Um, in the first three weeks of May, I didn't get the numbers today, but in the first three weeks of May, our average now is 539 on average. So 356 to 539 in just uh, five months was just so encouraging. So we're seeing uh, some growth in this place, and God is good in providing that. Um, the uh, other thing that we're seeing is, to break it down a little bit more, our kids' ministry is really booming, which is also very encouraging in the life of the church. So in January, the average attendance for our, our kids' ministry was about 72 kids a Sunday. Uh, in May, in three weeks so far, we have 114 kids on average in our kids' ministry. So God is bringing uh, not just people, but young families, which is also very encouraging to the church. Um, you know, we, get, we stand up here every week and we uh, talk about connect cards. And if you're a part of our church, you actually tune out during that time because you're like, oh, here they go again, talking about the connect cards and all of that. But that is really important uh, because even if there's one person out there that's brand new, it is vital that they know how to connect with us. And I wanted to give you good news that we've had um, over the past five months, 68 connect cards filled out uh, and we know of we're not sure how many have kind of stuck but I know of at least as I've looked through about 34 35 uh, people who have stuck either become members or at least still going here which is which is very encouraging um, connect by the way not very many people fill out a connect card because they know that filling out connect cards means they're making themselves known Right? People know how that works. So there's still a lot of people that are coming in and out, going, trying to feel out if this is a place they want to take a next step. Um, new, uh, new families and kids. So Caitlin and I were talking, and they we're averaging about one new family a week. So some weeks we get three new families that show up. Some weeks we get one, but we are, we are averaging at least a family per week that's checking their kids in, um, which is another way that we track new people. And a lot of those folks don't fill out Connect cards. Um, so those are some of the ways we see different people coming into the church. Um, this is, I, I think this is really cool too. I want to measure how many people are plugging into serving here at this church. We have uh, found that we have around 170 people that have found their place serving in one of the areas here at this church. That's a really good number. Uh, at the same time, we do have uh, probably around 260 members uh, right now after this last membership class just came in, which means there are still some people that we want to find their place serving in some way. And so we want to help you do that, and we want to help you take that next step, but I just want to kind of encourage you in that. But I think it's incredibly encouraging to see all the people that are serving. A uh, part of how uh, you can get uh, more people can get plugged into serving is I'm going to talk in a little bit about some of the new ministries we're actually going to be starting so that there are more opportunities. You know that there are more opportunities to serve. It may sound like 170 people serving. That means there's nothing left to do. It's not true, though. We, we want to continue to add different areas of ministry, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we've had 25 new members uh, come in the last five months, which is very encouraging. Uh, our road trip series that we did, I think this is, a, this is another kind of uh, encouraging number from a growth standpoint. We made 350 of those journals, and every single one of them was taken, and we had people going, hey, we'd like one. We had to point them to the online PDF that we posted, which is really encouraging that we had Every, we had 350 people and families that were actually in God's Word and studying the Gospel of John together. That is incredibly encouraging, and you all responded so well uh, to that. Um, along with that, I don't know, I think you young families have noticed this, hopefully, but our uh, Caitlin and, and Nikki have done a wonderful job of lining up, not just in the, in the road trip series, but lining up the kids' curriculum to match what happens here in the worship service every single week. 
So you, and that the whole purpose of that is we are all about leading families to discover life in Jesus, which means we want families to be talking about Jesus in the home. This is one way that we can spark discussions among parents and kids at home. My daughter, it just happened tonight. My daughter said, uh, I was talking to Jillian about the sermon, and uh, my daughter said, hey, wait, you guys did Joseph too in the service? And I said, yeah. And um, we'll have to follow up on that later because we didn't have a lot of time to discuss. But we, uh, we, really want, um, we really want you to have those conversations at home. That's why we're doing those things. All right. Uh, baptisms. We've had 24 baptisms in the last five months, which is great. Our next baptism service is coming in October. Um, one of the highlights for those, I don't know if you noticed, but we had— uh, Two, like back in January, we had a father-son duo get baptized, a, a dad and his high school son. What an amazing thing to experience together. Then this past Sunday, we had a baptism service with another father-son duo, the sons in middle school, and he expressed interest in getting baptized, and his dad came to the class. He was like, you know what? I should do this too, and they, they ba- were baptized together. Um, and then we had another mother-daughter, uh, an adult daughter, and a mom get baptized together. Um, I just think those are, I mean, every baptism is a highlight, so I don't want to dismiss anything else, but I love watching families, literally families, discover life in Jesus together. That is huge. Um, with, uh, with the growth comes problems, right? Right? but good problems. So I love when probably everybody says like, we've got good problems, and that's true, but we do have problems. One of those I'll just mention right now is that we are starting to have parking problems, all right, which is really, like I said, it's really good. We've had some weeks where we've had, uh, Tim Claypool is the parking guy, by the way. Uh, He updates us every week and says, We've had, you know, we have 10 people this week in non-traditional parking spots, is what he calls them. So we've got people parking in grass and whatever else they can find on Sundays, which is a good problem, but a problem. So all I want to say to you as members, as a heads up, is that uh, there's going to be a time where we may ask you to park off-site, whether it be at the Heinen's parking lot or so, and, and take a shuttle to come here. That would be a temporary solution, and the elders and, and myself are working on some more permanent solutions to figure out how we can make sure we don't ever have anyone pull in our lot and pull right back out because they can't uh, park. That would be like my heart would skip a beat uh, if I saw that happen. So we, uh, we definitely want to deal with those problems. All right. Next thing is what's coming up, and uh, one of those things is happening right now. I've told you about it already once, but we have a building kind of refresh that really is one of our last steps in kind of really creating an identity as Silver Creek Church. We already have an identity, but we want to make the building look and feel Silver Creek. And, uh, and so we are excited to be doing some painting and some renovations. And I wanted to just show you like two quick sneak peeks of that. So we're kind of revamping. This is just a small thing. We're revamping our welcome center uh, so that it, it'll be a great place for people to take their next steps. And then you can turn to the next slide, David. And then uh, we're excited to kind of uh, put this huge, uh, it's kind of like a, a vinyl uh, sticker, but that will just be, I think, a really great kind of welcoming statement as people come in. We're going to have paint on the walls and other places. Um, We are going to have some of our motives. If you remember, there are six motives or values that that we kind of use as bumpers to help get us where we're going. Those are going to be on the walls. Uh, Our kids area is going to get an update. As you can probably see, it's it's torn up right now um, so that it's a great place for kids. It's brightened up a little bit in light. And, um, and so we're excited to make some of those changes. And I just want to say thank you because of your generosity and the faithfulness of your giving and the growth we've experienced. We have the ability uh, to do these things, which is amazing. All right. I also wanted to give you a little bit of, a, of an insight to... Uh, our preaching plan here. So week in and week out, you come in and, you know, you, you, you hear we're starting a new series, but I want to tell you there's a method to our madness. This is not something that we talk about a lot on Sundays, but um, one of my goals that I wanted to give you is that uh, we want to preach in, in about the next 
15 years, I want to preach through the whole Bible. So I want to cover as much of the Bible as we possibly can. And uh, that's, that's a tall order because some of those books are, are tough ones. So it might, look, uh, it might look different for each book, but we want to do that. So if you remember last year, um, we did uh, a whole bunch of the minor prophets, Hosea, Joel, Amos, um, I forget which ones we did, Habakkuk and Malachi. Um, and we did John and Romans last year. So far this year, we've, or sorry, John this year, Romans last year. Um, this year in the summer, in a, about four weeks, we're going to start a series through the book of Daniel. And I don't know, if you guys are familiar with Daniel, we're going all in with Daniel. So the whole book of Daniel, and it gets interesting in Daniel. So pray for me and for our pastoral team as we as we handle this but we're excited to go through daniel and then first peter uh is the one we're going to start in the fall we are going to continue to intersperse uh topical series because of our emphasis on family we felt like it's really important to do different series centered around growing marriages uh even we've done series on parenting um, so we want to make sure we're doing some topical stuff all based on the Bible. So we're always, you'll notice this, and you, hopefully you have noticed, we're always preaching from a passage. But it might, it might be a topical series that goes to a passage. Um, but a lot of times we're going to preach through uh, a whole book. And uh, because the road trip series went so well, we want to do more of that sort of thing where we provide you resources for yourself to grow on your own with in the passage that we're, or the book of the Bible that we're in, or with your family. So we want to continue to do those things. Um, all right. Other things that are coming up. Uh, we are uh, excited to be now launching new ministries. So part of going independent is you, you start to realize all the things that you don't have that you need to get going in order to really, what I believe, is to be a healthy church. So we are launching a premarital mentoring ministry now. We have couples that have started to come to us and say, we want to get married here, and we say, that's awesome. We want to prepare you very well. Couldn't think of a better way to lead families to discover life in Jesus than to set them off on a great foundation for their marriage. So um, Ed and Eddie Grabelny are going to actually be kind of spearheading and championing the premarital mentoring ministry here. We just had a meeting this morning. We're going to be training uh, mentors. It's another example of things that you may get involved with if uh, you have not yet found a place to serve. You don't have to be married for 50 years to do it either. Uh, you can, you know, you can have a, a, a younger marriage. We just want you to be able to help another couple and walk alongside them, and we provide resources. Um, all right. Ed and Eddie, I gave a little plug for you guys. Nice work. <laughs> All right. Um, financial stewardship ministry is also something we want to launch. Um, again, uh, Rob Bowers, who's right back here. Uh, Rob, if you want to raise your hand, he's going to be actually uh, championing a financial stewardship ministry where we're going to have classes that people can take that will um, help help you figure out how to use your finances to God's glory, uh, budgeting, all of those things if there is need. They can even coincide with our premarital mentoring program where if a couple needs some help getting, uh, you know, off the ground with their finances, we want to have coaches trained and ready to, 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 to send uh, to that couple. Uh, Re-engage marriage ministry is something we are going to be launching in the fall. This is one that I've been, uh, my wife Jillian and I are very passionate about, have been desiring to launch since we got here, since that's exactly what we did back at CCC in Hudson. And so we've been doing a pilot with uh, five other couples to kind of train them up to be leaders in this ministry, and uh, you can look for that to get going on Wednesday nights in the fall. Um, so good stuff there. By the way, that is a wonderful ministry to invite uh, another couple to because what we've found is that a lot of couples, uh, they may not care about Jesus yet, but they care about their marriage. And if we can have them come to care about their marriage and find Jesus actually is the secret to, um, to a good marriage, then that is uh, incredible. So consider that if you're trying to engage with somebody that's outside the church re-engage with them. All right. Um, sorry. 
Okay, uh, that also includes in uh, August, we're going to do a date night where we're actually going to invite, uh, that's going to be the way we launch Reengage is that we're going to do this big date night. We're going to have child care back here, and it's literally just come, uh, drop your kids off, and go on a date and come back and pick them up. But we're going to uh, provide some date night questions and some different things that will kind of guide you through a date. And uh, I think it'll be a great way then to promote re-engage coming up. So again, if you're, you want somebody, if you're thinking of inviting somebody to our church, that could be a good first step. What's better than a free date night? Um, well, you got to pay for the dinner, but not the child care. All right. Okay. Uh, just two more things, and then I'm going to uh, shift gears. Rally Point, we started last year. It's a ministry team training for all of our volunteers. It went so well uh, the first year, but we want to continue to make that an annual thing. So the end of August, August 27th, we're going to be doing um, Rally Point again. It's a Saturday morning. would love for you to just kind of save the date on that one as people who are bought in here. All right. Last thing that I'm very excited about here is to begin launching uh, and partnering with local and global ministries outside of the church. So if you were here and you remember in the members meeting back in the fall or whenever you took it, we have three big goals that are 10-year goals here. One of those goals is that we would be able to, in 10 years, give at least 10% of everything uh, in our budget outside of the church to local and global ministries that are leading families to discover life in Jesus because we are not just you know we want to open our eyes to the world around us and all that God is doing and be a part of that I want to be able to say to you and you give to this place that your giving is being diversified outside of this place to support the kingdom all around the world now here's the exciting thing you're going to hear this from John Jones in a little bit but 10% was our goal, and our elders are aiming right now to give, to, to give 5% in the next fiscal year. So five months, and we're actually halfway to our goal. I think we undershot. Um, but that's a great thing. We can extend, we can extend our goal. Um, and that's thanks to all of you for your, for your giving. Um, also, one thing that if you've been around this church when it was CCC for a while, you may be familiar with the Micah 6-8 uh, weekend idea where we take all the giving for a week for one Sunday. We present to you a ministry, and then you give, and all your giving goes directly to that ministry or those ministries that we present to you, and uh, not anything is kept for the operations of this church. We plan to do one of those this year as well, which is very exciting, and we want to make that a rhythm of, of our church. So, all right, let me uh, then do one more thing, and then I'm going to introduce some staff that are going to give you some updates. So go to the map there, David, or Nick. All right, so... If you, were, if you were a part of our membership class at any point, you've seen this map. If you're newer to this, what I want to tell you is uh, we have, you know, the vision that God has given us, which is leading families to discover life in Jesus. All right, we have our three big goals that we want to be uh, a church that in 10 years is filled with Jesus-rooted families, that we have Jesus-saturated neighborhoods, and that's connected to our community groups, and Jesus-focused giving. And that I referenced that 10% giving outside the church. Well, with those goals uh, comes a map on how we're actually going to accomplish all of this. So this is our ministry map. And uh, I just wanted to go over it very briefly with you. And what I'm going to do is have some of our staff come up and give uh, some highlights of how they are executing their ministries utilizing the, the map. Um, so if you look at the ministry map, you see the, the long black arrow pointing this way, right? That is the growth in any person that comes to this church, right? On the very far left-hand side, all right, is... A, uh, is Joe Schmo in your neighborhood that could care less about Jesus or church? And that's where that person is. The far right side is everybody who's leading and serving, probably most of you in this room, somebody who's really growing in their relationship with Jesus, 
right? The line in the middle, the black line in the middle, is when someone comes to know Jesus. Okay, so the whole, the, the visual of this map, and hopefully what's helpful to you, is that everything that we do on the left side of the map is aimed at communicating the gospel to people who do not know Jesus. Okay, that's everything on that side. Everything on the right side of the map is aimed at helping people who do know Jesus grow in their relationship with him. All right, so this is just a reminder. Um, you have on the left side, you have things like go and be events. Extravaganza is one of them. I'm sure Caitlin will talk about that. Um, come and see events is, again, like a VBC or, a, or a, um, a women's Christmas tea type of event where we invite people to come here. But we want both of those things to happen. When you see Sunday guest, that's anybody who's here that it doesn't know Jesus. They're coming as a guest. Our goal for those people is to connect with them and hopefully get them into Discovery 101 where they will hear the gospel and hopefully have a chance to come to know Jesus if they don't. Once they're in Discovery 101, then it becomes Sunday home for them. This is their home. And our next two things we want to ask them to do is to find a community group and to serve. Those are the two things we expect of every person here at this group, at this church. Uh, and then, obviously, the, the very next thing is that you would begin to grow to a point where you, maybe you'd even take on leadership roles within the church. And, uh, and that's the way the map works. Of course, uh, undergirded by everything along the way are things that can really strengthen your, uh, your faith and your knowledge of, the, of, of God's Word, like Bible studies, like re-engage, like parenting classes, and different things that we do. So that's a brief overview of the map. But um, if you ever hear us talking, like as a staff, and we say, hey, that's a left side of the map event. What am I talking about? Yeah, non-Christians is where we're focused. So any of those, so if you're leading a ministry or you're uh, leading an event and we say this is a left side of map event, um, or we're inviting you to a left side map event, what we're saying is try not to come without somebody that doesn't know Jesus, right? Because this event is not necessarily for you, right? If we say right side of the map, we are, we are talking, about, talking about specific things that will help the believer grow. Right? So those are two things. Now, let me stop talking because you're sick of hearing from me and, uh, and have our, some of our staff share some updates with you. So Caitlin, Caitlin Ramey, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Well, good evening. I don't know about you, but it's hard to sit and not get excited about what God is doing here. Does that excite you? Just hearing all these? Yes. I believe I have met most of you in here, but if I haven't, uh, my name is Caitlin, as Todd said, and I am the director of Silver Creek Kids. And right now we are in a heavy season of the left side. Oh, the map is down. I was going to use it. That's okay. It's okay. The left side, there, the left side of the map are come and see events. And as you know, right now we are in the thick of planning for our vacation Bible camp. It is what we consider currently our biggest outreach, outreach event for kids. And I have to tell you, this event, what we don't ever want it to be is just something people, you know, drop their kids off to come to and just to hang out for a couple hours. We're incredibly intentional about this event. We want it to be something that kids get excited about the minute they hit the, the building, they come in, they can see it's fun, they might make some new friends, they build relationships with the different adults, adults make friendships with each other, and overall they leave not only just having a really great morning, but they have know Jesus a little bit more. And so for us, that is the biggest win for this Come and See event. But I have to tell you that besides how we promote this event, our biggest reach is me and you. So our biggest opportunity to reach the kids in this community is you guys by inviting by looking around your neighborhood and saying, who can I invite? Or maybe at my child's you know, sports games, or maybe it's a family member that you think, you know what, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna take a leap of faith and I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna invite them. Because when you do that, they come here 
and they get to hear about Jesus. And some of them may never get that opportunity if we're not the ones making that reach. And so I want to encourage you, as you hear about Vacation Bible Camp, just be praying about someone, maybe in your neighborhood or who you know, that you could reach out to and invite them. Um, as Todd mentioned, Go and Be, which is also on the left side of our map, um, just like Come and See, Vacation Bible Camp, we want to be those going out into our neighborhoods and building those relationships. And so this year, we took Extravaganza, which we've done uh, in years past, and we took that, and our families grabbed that vision, and they took them out into their neighborhoods. And we had 14 different families who did that, and that's 14 different uh, neighborhoods, and, and um, the feedback that we got from that was phenomenal. Just, hey, I met new neighbors that I'd never met before, or I built a relationship, or I was nervous to do it, but you know what? It was really easy, and all the kids came, and they had a lot of fun, and it was just an easy, low-key event for them to do, and so we will be doing uh, more of those Go and Be events, so you'll be see seeing those and hearing more about those, so that's the left side of our map. The right side of our map is our serve, and that's our volunteer team, and I have to tell you, and I always have said this, we could not do kids' ministry without our volunteers. It's just fact. It's just Nikki and I. So if it was just Nikki and I, we wouldn't be able to have a successful ministry because we need each and every single one of our volunteers. And this year, probably in the last 10 months or so, we've onboarded at least 30 new volunteers back in kids' ministry, which is amazing. They're people who are passionate, they want to invest, and they love Jesus. And they want kids to know Jesus too. And so even though we're growing, 30 is amazing. God has been so good and so faithful, but that number will continue to need to grow as we need to you know, meet the needs of families and build relationships and um, all the amazing things God's doing in kids' ministry. And we just play a really small role. You kind of sometimes have to step back and just see and just watch what he's doing. So I feel really privileged to be a part of that. Um, and then Todd asked us to share just a little bit. Um, one of the opportunities that we have in kids uh, that we get to do on a Sunday morning is just connect with people, talk with them, get to know them, get to know the kids, get to know the parents and the families. And I've had the privilege of meeting uh, a really sweet family, and I just wanted to share a little something from them. Um, so hopefully it's an encouragement to you this evening. Uh, just in addition to all the other great things that you have heard. So I was going to tell the story, but I thought it would be even better to hear from them. So they sent me their story, and it's wonderful. So let me read it to you. Lindsay and I live in Hudson and have three children, seven years and under. For the past 10 years, we attended a strong Bible-based church 35 minutes away from us. As Lindsay and I watched our family grow, we came to realize that our family needs had grown as well. God laid on our hearts the need for a more localized Bible, biblical church, a church where the gospel was central, discipleship was a high priority for men and women, and children's ministry where children were not viewed as the church of tomorrow, but the church of today. We started looking online and tuned in virtually to CCC Aurora on the Sunday when the vision for what would become Silver Creek was announced. We knew that God was doing good things amidst this congregation, and we prayed for this church, tuned in virtually, and attended the Build Your Marriage class during COVID. In fall of 2021, we began attending Wednesday family nights, men and women's Bible studies, and Bible lessons for the kids. We were welcomed with open arms, and our children couldn't wait to come back week after week. Lindsay and I were spiritually encouraged by the studies and made some strong friendships. Our daughter's eyes lit up when they would see their new friends and come home singing the keynote Bible verses. We started officially attending Sunday morning worship two months ago and are eagerly, eagerly excited for God to continue to lead our family closer to Jesus through Silver Creek with grateful hearts, Ed and Lindsay Leonard. So isn't that amazing? That should encourage you that God is using this place to build and develop those relationships and that he is at work here. So thank you for letting me share. And those are just a few things happening in Silver Creek Kids. I could stand up here and go on and on and on, but I won't do that. So thank you.
Well, hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Dominic Massa. You get the full name today. Dominic, that's right. No, call me Dom. Um, it's just on my name tag. It's the full thing, so we're very official here tonight. Um, David, could you actually throw up the map again? I'm the map. I'm the map. Okay, so uh, I love this map. I uh, oversee student ministry. We call it student life here, and that goes from middle school to high school. And um, I just want to encourage you guys, if you get the chance, take a picture of this map, memorize this map. This map has helped me think more like Jesus. Um, and that's why I love it. Because when you look at Jesus' life, you see him walking this entire map with people. Uh, always living on the left side with them, but ultimately leading them towards a life with him, a life with God. And so um, student life also really does um, as much as we can to reflect this map in our own way with students. And um, we have a lot of exciting things happening on both the left side and the right side of this map. Uh, I just wanted to share a few of those numbers with you, but also some stories. Um, but friends, I just want to say first and foremost, um, we want to reach students in the greater Aurora area. Um, and that's a lot of students, okay? Just about a mile from here is 3,000 of those students at the Aurora School campus, right? They've got the middle school and high school right over there. But we want to reach the entire greater Aurora area, but we want to be really intentional with what's right in front of us, which is Aurora itself. And we've had some really cool inroads with the school district here, uh, just being able to meet kids where they're at, right? That's on the left side of the map, the go and be. We call it turf time because we want to get on other people's turf, right? We want to live life with them, connect with them, and then walk with them towards Jesus. I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way, but in my experience, talking to somebody about something spiritual is one of the most intimate things you could do. Right? And that takes a lot of relational capital. It takes a lot of relational investment to get there in a meaningful way. Now, of course, you can have those random conversations that God opens up doors for, and that can be monumental. People are changed by that. But I think God's work in our lives is far more ordinary than we think. Right? It's the people all around us all the time. And so as we think about student life, we really want to get into the life of students right here in Aurora, in the greater Aurora area, in very ordinary ways, but in ways that build up that relational capital so that we can use that to walk with them towards Jesus. And to do this, um, we are really a ministry focused on leaders. We want to raise up leaders who can get on this map with students and walk them towards Jesus. And we have, uh, as of now, 15 leaders across middle school and high school that are placed with the mindset of how do we not only lead the students who are here, but also also the students who are there, right? How do we lead these students? Because they're all our students, right? They're in our sights. They're in our prayer. We want to see them take steps towards Jesus. And so some of these leaders uh, might be tutoring, might be coaching, right? I, I've heard it said about churches, right? We want to be the kind of church where if we disappeared tomorrow, the entire community would be like, what, what happened? We, we want them, right? And, and to take that one step further, Right? We don't want to just be the church, right? the building, the location here on Chillicothe Road. I want us to be the kind of church where if Christians disappear from this school district, we're getting a phone call, right? Because you are a vital part of reaching students and leading them towards Jesus. And that's happening in our midst. So much so that this is an exciting uh, number to share with you. On that left side of the map, we have personally connected with, meaning we have had conversations and know their name and we're praying for them by name, uh, 307 students here in Aurora. That's just Aurora. Right? And in those 307 students that we know by name and that we pray for by name, 116 of them are in high school and 191 of them are in middle school. Right? So that's our left side of the map. Right? God is moving in some powerful ways, just giving us those connections, giving us the ability to have a conversation with them, to know them by name, and to be actively praying for them. Because we want to be a community that's constantly in conversation with God about what he's doing in the lives of students. And we have events on the left side of the map that help us meet these kids. Events like uh, a trip to Kalahari, right? <laughs> Who doesn't want to do that? Uh, dodgeball tournaments, cornhole tournaments, and actually 
I'll tell you the story of a student I met last summer at a cornhole tournament who today uh, declares himself to be a Christian. Um, and it all started at a cornhole tournament, right? So these events, this map, uh, really happens in the lives of real people. Now, as we think about the right side of the map, right, we, we don't just want to be a community that is uh, reaching those who don't know Jesus, but we want to be a community that's really raising up students who are bought in with him as well, right? We want to be a part of the growth of Christians as well. And so on the right side of our map, out of that 307 students that we know by name and are praying for, 60 of them are in intentional discipleship communities right here at Silver Creek. Um, So of that 360 of them are bought in with Jesus. And let me just say something. When a student uh, gets bought in with Jesus and they're willing to take this mission with them into their school, they become like a cell phone tower, right? And the reception of people hearing clear things about God around them increases, right? They, they, they get in the midst of their friend groups, and all of a sudden you have entire communities that are really reached uh, with Jesus and, and who he is. And so that's something uh, really exciting happening on the right side of our map. And even this summer, we're doing something called discipleship training, where we're in, inviting about 15 people to go through it um, so that they can start uh, thinking more intentionally with this kind of map. Right, and also uh, knowing what it looks like to walk with Jesus in a healthy way, and a part of being healthy with him is living missionally with him. And so, um, yeah, the right map stuff is happening with stuff like house groups, where are like small groups for students. Um, we had a student life weekend retreat uh, just a month or two ago. That was an amazing time for students to go deeper in their faith. Um, there is some really exciting things happening in the lives of students in our community. And I wanted to just share a few uh, stories of students um, before we pass it off to Pastor Dan um, of, of lives that have been changed because of discovering uh, Jesus. And uh, I think Todd mentioned that there were baptisms happening this year, like 25 of them. Um, out of those 25 baptisms, about 12 are students, right? So almost half of the people being baptized at this church are below the age of 18, which is just amazing that we're seeing that kind of movement of what God is doing in young people's lives. Um, One of those students, his name's Garrett, um, and he made a decision on our student life weekend to follow Jesus, right? He decided, hey, uh, you know, I am ready to do this. I've been listening long enough. It's time for me to get in the game, right? There's um, also two other girls who didn't go on our uh, student life weekend, but they're connected with us. They are on the left side of our map, and um, these are girls who started showing up around an event that we did called the Games for Middle Schoolers, and it was a little unique because I didn't know who was bringing them because their parents weren't bringing them. It was actually um, someone, a friend of their parents, because their parents actually don't leave their home. They, they have a condition where they just will not leave the house. But these two middle school girls are coordinating rides for themselves every Wednesday night to get to our middle school events. And uh, one thing that was just neat was just talking to these girls, what I could hear in their voice was that they were fighting to get here. Like, they were willing to do whatever it took to get here because even though they're not Christians, they know something's happening here that they want to be a part of. Um, And so I'm praying for those girls. I don't want to share their names, but um, just be praying for them uh, even tonight as we talk. And uh, the last thing I wanted to share was just about a high schooler. His first name's Angus. uh, Pretty memorable name, right? (laughs) Um, And we met him at a cornhole tournament this past summer at the high school. And uh, my very first conversation with him, he came up to me, and we're playing cornhole, and he just looks at me, and he says, hey, are you kind of like the pastor guy who, like, runs student life? I was like, yeah. He's like, hey, I'm an atheist. (laughs) It was like, okay. Uh, And so we played a game of cornhole and just talked more about what he uh, believed, and uh, Angus started attending student life throughout the fall and the spring, and just uh, two months ago, I was uh, in a car uh, full of one other leader, and Angus taking him home, and he he looked at me and said, hey, Dom, this has been a really great year, and so I just asked him, what's made it so great, Angus? And he he starts kind of listing off all these things that have been great, and he says, but Dom, the best thing is that this year has shown me that I want to be a Christian, and um, that was just an amazing moment of seeing this map uh, at work in someone's life, 
right? Now, there is still a road ahead for Angus, right, where he's uh, making strides forward, figuring out what this actually means to be committed to Jesus. Um, but that's just one small glimpse at what God is doing, not only in the lives of kids, but also our middle schoolers and high schoolers. So uh, if you have any questions about anything I've shared or you want to get involved with Student Life, let me know. I'll be hanging out after uh, our meeting, but it is uh, some pretty exciting stuff to get behind and be praying for. So thanks for this time. Welcome up Pastor Dan now. Woo thank you, thank you. Well, good evening. My name is uh, Daniel Joseph Gifford the first. Since we're being really official, real official this morning. Uh, but uh, this evening, I said this morning. Sorry, I'm still in preaching mode. I'm, my apologies. But. Uh, well, I want to kind of share some updates with you about our community group uh, ministry. And as you can see on the map, it is uh, on the right side. It has its own space because it's so essential to what we do here at Silver Creek. And uh, I've been in this position now just coming up on about eight months. And before I begin, I just want to say thank you so much to, to Todd and, and our elders for trusting me to, to ha take on this role, but also for you guys to embrace me and our family. We have uh, not felt... Uh, embraced by a church uh, like we have here at Silver Creek in almost 14 years of marriage. So thank you so much for loving us and accepting us and to be a part of your church family. Uh, a couple things I want to share just right off uh, the bat. If you see kind of community groups on the right side, they are, they are the prime training ground to kind of encourage believers to grow, not just in their faith, but also to kind of push them toward uh, areas of serving and leadership. And so we, we believe they're essential for just the discipleship and sanctification process. Uh, here um, at our church, as of right now, we have over 220 adults connected to a community group with 22 current groups. Now, seven of which uh, were either relaunched or launched or kind of birthed out of a, an existing group since uh, the fall of last year. And so, so we're seeing some growth there. But if you're a numbers person like me, you know that if you divide 220 by 22 groups, that we have about 10 people per group, which means we're pretty close to capacity. And so one of the things I wanted to share with you is even though we've seen some growth, that we are far away from where I believe that we need to be as a church to provide the important community that, that really God has created us for. And so one of the things you'll be seeing down, this, uh, down the line here as we kind of hit toward the end of the summer is I'm going to be looking to push uh, the launching of some new groups. And so uh, if you yourself are interested in that or know somebody who is, uh, I want to begin training and kind of preparing. I really think we need need to be at about 30 groups in order to provide the kind of uh, communities and care for people that are looking for that here at this church. Because as we grow, I'm getting every week more and more requests, and it's just getting harder and harder to get people connected with a group that has the space, a group that meets in the right place, and other things like that. So we're really excited about where we're going, but there's a ton of work to do as we continue on. I'm excited to see how God is going to continue to grow us as we pursue Him. Uh, and I want to encourage you, uh, if you're on the fence, I, did, I want to share my story first before I hit the left side, because believe it or not, even though we have a, a space on the right side here, uh, we do uh, have a connection with the left side of the map and want to see our community groups almost function uh, in all areas of this map if uh, they can. And so I'll get to that in a second, but I want to kind of share with you a story about Ron and Christine Smearzak. Now, uh, I did connect... Christine, I talked to Ron about this. Hopefully you're okay with me sharing this story. Um, he said it was fine. He said you'd be fine with this as well. But uh, when I first got here and we kind of got through our first Discovery 101 class and we had uh, people uh, commit to be members, we had about 65 uh, people that wanted to be members but were yet or not yet connected to a community group. And as we kind of encourage our members, uh, you know, as we look at the New Testament, really what we believe a New Testament believer is to do and to be, is that they're not only just coming to church on Sunday, but they're also serving and also connected with a small group. Um, and so I had a big task of trying to get people connected, and I kind of was like begging people to give me names. Who do I talk to? Who here in this church, because I didn't know anybody, uh, is capable of leading, and he could see them, and, and their names came across uh, my list, and, and I emailed them and inquired and if they're interested. And we met, and we talked, and they were already in a group, but had a heart to want to maybe open up their home and start serving as community group leaders. 
And they were a little apprehensive, mostly because they had other commitments that they were hoping to do here as a part of this church. And uh, eventually they decided to take the leap, and, and I, I sent them about five or six couples, I think it was, and they connected with them, and it was really neat because after two meetings, she came up to me, Christine came up to me, and was just, she said, it feels like this community was meant to be together. And that is exactly what we want to see here at this church. We want to knit people together where they can care for one another. They can grow through God's word. And I'm about to connect with this in a second. But also be committed to reaching the lost in our community. And so that's how our community groups connect with the left side of the map is that we uh, are asking all of our groups to do three things. I just mentioned them. We want our groups to care for one another. Not just simply meet together and have fun and fellowship, but generally do life together, celebrate milestones in the, in the family, to care for each other when they're hurting, to pray for one another. We want them to be growing through God's word. We know community groups, it's natural to make them like Bible studies, and we want that. We want our, our groups to be digging into God's word, to be theological communities that are studying and growing through God's word together. But we also want our groups to be very missional, to be uh, intentional about reaching neighborhoods. And so we want uh, our groups, one of the things we've challenged our group is to be thinking about ways they can host events in communities, in neighborhoods, to begin uh, developing relationships in our community to reach people at the neighborhood level. Uh, last year in the fall, we had, uh, in the, uh, sorry, in the fourth quarter, we've had two of our groups uh, take that challenge and do some neighborhood events. And this year already, we've had several groups partner with our kids, uh, Silver Creek kids, to do the egg extravaganza. Uh, and our goal really is to see all of our groups uh, in the year to do at least one kind of neighborhood event. And I just want to cast some vision for you there. Think about this. As a church, there's only so many outreach events we as a staff and a ministry can do on our own, but if every single community group did one thing, that would mean our church as a whole right now would do 22 outreach events in our community. And if we got that to, to 30 groups and we had 30 different things going on, I mean, the number is incredible to think that just about once every two weeks, we are having a presence in our neighborhoods, caring for people, being that constant presence that when, as Dom even said, when something's coming up in their life, uh, they, they know who to come to because we're here for them. And so uh, one of the things we're going to push for is this year is in the fall, we're going to do, you know, kind of push some things for some fall fests and other things like that. But big vision down the road is we want to be able to, as a church, support community groups in that. And so one of the things we want to do down the road is put together a block party team that over the summer, a community group could host a block party. And we would have the materials and the staffing to come alongside that community group and help them in their neighborhood, on their own property, host a block party uh, with food and fellowship and fun games for the neighborhood so that we have opportunities at church not just to gather together but to be the church and go be what God has called us to be in our neighborhoods um, that's about all I have right now do you want to pass it off to you all right thank you guys thanks very much very good updates you give a few staff members the mic and they're going to take a lot of time so um which was well worth it, guys. Thank you. Um, we're, we might go uh, about five minutes over or so, but um, I'd like to finish off our time here with John Jones coming up to give us a financial update. So, uh, John, would you come on up and give John a round of applause? Uh, yeah, thank you, Todd. I, well, first of all, you're too kind. Uh, you haven't seen how many slides I have yet, so wait. No. Um, seriously, I know... You know, I have the privilege of serving as the treasurer on our elder board, and it really has been. I think back to just a couple years ago as we were starting to think about independence and trying to figure out how we are going to pull that off. Uh, it was sometime in mid to late 2019, and then as we got into 2020, you all know what happened. So this isn't so much a financial update. I want you to think about it as a celebration of your generosity and the stewardship of the people here that are leading this church, because it's been quite amazing. So, you know, what I have to share is really just a success, uh, and, and uh, hopefully you'll see it's a real encouragement. Uh, so thank you to all of you. So if you wouldn't mind um, going ahead one more slide. I, I tend to be more visual. Hopefully you'll be able to see this, and if the numbers are a little small, I'll help you out. But uh, the, um, the black line on here is our giving as a church, your giving as a church, and what you have helped 
uh, this team here do with your generosity. You can see that uh, the black line's going up, that's good. The green bars are our expenses here as a church, and we've managed those really, really well. Uh, excellent leadership here. Um, admittedly, we've had a few staff openings over the last couple of years that we've now been filling, which is really going to help as the church continues to grow. But it's a great story. Uh, this year, our giving, we will finish. Uh, we're on the, the fiscal year for the church ends in June, and then we start our new fiscal year in July. So we've got two months to go. We are on track right now uh, to have giving that should approach uh, right around a million dollars in total. And you can see how much that has gone up over the last couple of years, despite uh, significant challenges. Expenses have been running at about 775000 uh, is where we think we'll finish this year. So we have a reserve that has grown, uh, which is fantastic. As a new church, we weren't sure how we'd do coming into this year. But again, as you can see, we're actually in really great shape. And we have a target of uh, maintaining a reserve of about four to five months of operating expenses. Um, when we exceed that, which we think we will here by the end of this year, that allows us to then start doing a couple of other things. Todd already mentioned uh, in the budget for this coming year, we've been able to increase the planned amount of outreach ministry giving uh, to about 5%. So we are hoping to be able to give around $50,000 back to local and global ministries, which is fabulous. Uh, so thank you for that. And then the other thing that we intend to do is to begin to accelerate the, um, the pay down on our loan on this building that we have here. Uh, so th those are the two you know, primary exciting things uh, that you know, we're hoping with your generosity. So if you go to the next slide, I'll just really quickly show um, the other thing that's exciting. So you saw that line going up. Uh, this is a little more detail. Our average weekly giving has gone from about 15000 a week at, in uh, early 2020 to a little over 20000 a week. So that's a 33% increase for those of you doing the quick math. Um, it's a fabulous story. The two big peaks, of course, in there are the week of Christmas uh, each year. That is our, that month and that week is our biggest week as a church. But your generosity has been incredible. We've seen uh, increases in attendance, which also translates into increases in total giving. So great story and a great trend that we've seen. And finally, I'll just uh, close and share a little bit about our budget for next year. Uh, this is a, just a quick view. Again, I've already talked a little bit about what we're planning to do for outreach, which is terrific. Uh, the um, staff includes all the things you might expect with uh, the salaries and benefits for the staff here. Uh, administrative and operating expenses are things like uh, electric and everything else that we, we have to do to take care of this great facility. Uh, the one thing that we are also going to be working on as an elder team is building a capital budget. So separate from this, uh, we're going to identify things that we see over the next 10 to 15 years you know, when we need to put a new roof on the building, when we need to do major structural uh, expansion, uh, things with the parking lot, all those types of things we'll be planning into the budgeting process as well. So that is a, a quick update, but as you can see, it's a great story. So thank you all. I can't, uh, can't appreciate enough how generous you are and the things that God is doing here and has is, is blessed uh, this church with and our community. It's because of you. So thank you. Todd? Well, once again, thanks. Thanks for your time. And you did that really quick. Well done. Um, but uh, really, thanks for your time tonight, and thanks for your commitment to this place. Um, it really is good to be able to share a lot of very good news uh, to you this, uh, this evening. Uh, as we close, uh, let me just go ahead and uh, pray for us, and then you can pick your kids up, and uh, we will have our elders out in the atrium. Uh, if you have questions about anything that you heard tonight, uh, they would love to, to answer. All right, let's pray. Father, we, uh, we thank you so much for who you are, for being our God, um, for being uh, the God who, who runs this place. We as elders, as staff, as leaders, we yield ourselves to you. Uh, we are at your mercy, and we believe that every bit of this success is not because of us. It's because of you, your glory. You deserve it all. And so we give you that glory, and we thank you for what you've done here, and we pray that we would stay humble here 
as leaders, that we would not, that we would keep um, our guard up, that we would guard our hearts, that you would keep us from temptation, that you would keep us from the evil one, and that you would help us to stay focused on keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who is the reason we are here. And it's by his power and in his name that I pray all these things. Amen. Hey, thank you again. Have a great night.